Case won the opening toss. They deferred to the second half. And so they will receive the opening kickoff here in the third quarter. David Wilson along with Ed Doherty. Great to have you with us for our coverage of Spartans football here on Case.edu. Dan Calabrese at the 11. Gets back to the middle of the field to the 15. Flat comes out. Calabrese is hit hard and knocked backwards. Adam Watson's going to get called for a block in the back as Case tried to shift that return from the right side to the left, and they had a return left set up, but fielded on the right side. So this will be a big penalty against Case. It'll push him inside the 10-yard line. Yeah, not a good start for Case on the flag on the return by Calabrese. And so there is your call, and Case will start out to inside the 10. We'll see where they mark it. Looks like they're going to walk it back from about the 17. And so they will put the football down at the seven yard line. 93 yards in front for Case as they trail it 14 to seven. That's another confusing spot. If it's a, from the 17, it should be a half the distance call and should be at the eight, between the eight and the nine yard line. And it looks like that is where they're going to put it at. Okay. Yep. Initially they had marked it at the seven. Yep. Marked off the full 10 yards. Here we go. First play for Case in the second half. They trail it 14 to seven. Beautiful day, bright and sunny skies here at Case Field. Secray gets the handoff, bounces off a tackler, now makes his way back up toward the pile. And as they angle over near the sideline, he is brought down. And that one may have gone for a loss. Second down and 11 coming up. Secray had a good first half, both running the ball and catching it. There's over 100 yards in total offense for Seacray. He had six catches, and that carry to start the second half was his ninth attempt of the day on the ground. Hanslick is checked in in the backfield. Three receivers set. Duraney is in at tight end on the right side of the formation, and Seacray might have been a little shaken up on that last play. Wittenberg's gone to a 3-4. Lapsevic on a little crossing pattern. Makes the catch, but only out near the 10-yard line. It's going to be third and long for Case as Lapsevic makes the catch. I believe that's his first catch of the day. See, now for Lapsevic, he's got to run that cross behind the linebackers. He ran them in front, and there was plenty of defense there to track him down as he turned it upfield. He has to go a little deeper on that cross, get behind the linebackers inside the secondary, and have some space to work for after he makes that catch. That's his first catch today, his 20th of the year. Olsen rolling to his left. Pump fakes, goes downfield for Rice, and it's just out of his reach as Rice made a diving attempt, and it is incomplete. Fourth down for Case, and the Spartans will have to punt, and Wittenberg can expect this one to start at midfield. Well, Manny Secret was definitely injured on that last play. He's working with two trainers on the bench as they're working on his left arm and elbow area. A case playing without Kenny Reardon, who was injured in week two. And now here's Alex Ojeda to punt from his own end zone. There is the snap, and they come after it, but he got the kick away. It'll be caught at the 45-yard line by Cunningham. Gets ahead for about two, maybe three on the return before he is knocked down by the Spartans punt coverage unit. Kevin Nassim was in there for Case. So getting in there on the tackle for the Spartans was Jake LaFleur. And good field position here for Wittenberg. They lead it by a score of 14 to seven, and they have a short field right now, and the Spartans defensively will need a big series here. Trainers continue to work on the left elbow of Manny Secret. Reed Florence back out at quarterback. Yeah, maybe looking at his forearm. He had wrapped it up uh, pretty well, and now they're still taking a look at it. Yep, you're right, I believe it is his elbow. They'll hand it to 
Hughes, who dives ahead to the 40-yard line, might have picked up one. Pardon me, Stocker on the run. It'll be second and long for Wittenberg here in the third quarter. And again, if you've just joined us, no functioning clock or scoreboard here at Case today. And so we are unable to give you exact times. In the dark, per, <laughs> per se. Ed will do his best to estimate. We've put Ed in charge of that today. On top of his uh, analyst duties, he is the timekeeper. Like if Firamonte comes to the sideline, he also has a shoulder or elbow issue with his right, right arm, and there's a false start going to be called against Wittenberg on the tight end. This will make it a second down and 12 for the Tigers as the football is marked off to the 43-yard line. They are operating in Case territory. Third quarter action here at Case Field on a beautiful day here in Cleveland, Ohio. Could not order up better weather. So the medical staff busy on the Case sideline right now with Secre and Firamonte. Back to throw Florence, second down and 12. Dumps it off to Cunningham. Good blocking in front, runs over Kerry Dieter, but Dieter able to haul him down at the 35-yard line. So they pick up eight on the play, and it'll be third, and we'll call it five. So a seven-yard pickup to the 36-yard line. Secre has been fitted with a pad on his left elbow, a compression pad, and now they're going to wrap that in some compression tape. Florence takes the shotgun snap, runs straight ahead. He's trying to get the first down. Doesn't li look like he got it as Nassim and Harris get to him. And he's short of the first down by at least a yard, maybe two. And Ferguson coming on a blitz from his... Hybrid position linebacker safety was at the bottom of that pile. Florence will stand in the shotgun on fourth and two. The football marked at the 33-yard line of the Spartans. Now they show a formation as if they're going for it. Trying to draw the Spartans off sides. Fourth down and two. They need to get to the 31. Florence running for it. There. He is caught again. That time Wade Self, Dan Calabrese, Kevin Nossum got in there, Jordan Banky helped out, and the Spartans wipe out the fourth down play, and they will take over on downs. Defensive stand that was needed. Case was ineffective on their opening drive, deep in their own territory, punted it back, and forced a four and out, if you will, again, against Wittenberg on the opening drive of the half. Now, Kerry Dieter getting some attention on the sideline. Looks like he's got a finger already wrapped and taped, and they're taking a look at that. And Firamonte still having his right shoulder or his right neck area. I think he got at. a stinger when he made a tackle earlier in the half, and he came off with his right arm really draped against his side. 14 to 7, Wittenberg. Case has the football. Olson takes the snap, goes back, hands to Ricky Hanslick. Hard running over the left tackle and earns about four yards on the play. Nicely done by Hanslick. Another and offensive lineman injured for Case. Matt White is going to be helped to the sideline. Starting left guard. And Shea Baker is going to come back in the ball game for him. Boy, the Spartans falling like flies here with the injuries in the second half. Eric Olson under center, calls out the signals. Two receivers on the right. They have Duraney in and Volbers, double tight end set. This is the formation they'd like to run that stretch play out of, and Wittenberg is shifted to the soft side of the field. There goes Hanslick. He'll cut back up the middle, has good yardage, and is close to the first down as he gets across the 40, out to the 42-yard line. He'll be a yard short. So they're looking at a third and about one. Wittenberg was reading the short side of the field as the strong side. And Case ran to the strong side with the wide receiver. Was able to pick up another four yards and make it a third and very short. 14-7 Wittenberg. We're in the third quarter. 
Case moving right to left. Here in the second half. Down by a touchdown here on homecoming Saturday. Unbalanced to the right with two tight ends on the left side. One on a wing is Duraney. They will fake the handoff to Hanslick. Rolling right. Olsen has some room to run. He ducks down and dives for the first down as he gets to the 45-yard line. First and 10 Spartans on the scramble by Eric Olsen. Olsen needs to make one read there and then decide. Is he going to run or throw? He tried to make too many reads in that short little area and almost did not get the first down. He needs to make the decision that if Duraney isn't open, he needs to use Duraney as a blocker and pick up as much yards as possible. One pump and go. Football at the 44-yard line. I thought he got to the 45. Secre is checked back in with that heavily bandaged left arm. They will hand it to Manny, and he has some good blocking up front. Takes a hit as he gets to midfield. And there again, Ed, the line judge is going to mark it at the 50. The side judge on the opposite side was standing at the 49 of Wittenberg, and they mark it back to the 50-yard line. It, it, I do not understand it. It's, they are certainly not splitting the difference. In fact, they're taking the... The shorter of the two marks he all afternoon. Appeared to get across the 50. Eric Olson at second and five from midfield. He'll take the snap, hand it to Seacrig, and picking his way forward. Nice spin move. Gets the football close to the 45 yard line of the Tigers. There's Killalay coming in, leading with his helmet, and no call. Seacrig was on the ground, and Killalay really bolted in with his helmet. They're going to take a look at this and they're going to measure. So First down case. I'll make the call right now, Dave. First down for the Spartans and it'll be by more than the white stripe of the ball. Well, they will bring the chains out for the first time today. And how much time is left in the third quarter? Well, we're going to put it right about Six and a half minutes. You know, the good thing about your estimations today, there's no, nothing to check it against. Uh, you are unchallenged. And you're right on. First down by the length of the football. Well, Manny Secre earns the first down. The football is at the 45-yard line of the Tigers. Wittenberg leading this game 14-7. to These teams have not played since 1999. I mean, <laughs> Bill Clinton was still president as we head into the third presidential election since the last time these two teams have played. Well, most of these guys, what, 10, 11 years old maybe when they, uh, these teams played? Yeah, they probably had not even put a helmet on. Maybe uh, eight or nine years old, that's right. First and 10 case. Eric Olson under center, calls out the signals. Hanslick is in, he'll take the hand off and he is tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. Nicely done. You know, as well as Duraney has blocked this afternoon, he wasn't able to control his end there and not able to make that turn block and <laughs> with that Duraney coming to the sideline. Evan Killalay on the tackle, the junior linebacker out of DeSales High School in Columbus makes the stop. Former Stallion playing with Archie Griffith's son is a former DeSales Stallion. Back to throw, Olsen gets rid of it quickly to Rice. Nice move, and the cutback gets to the 40, to the 30, down to the 25, and out of bounds. First down case as Brian Rice makes the grab and some nifty running afterwards and peels off a big gainer for the Spartans all the way down to the 25-yard line. Well, the timing was off all the way through that play, but... Olsen didn't wait for the lineman to get out in front. Rice had to take it and do it himself. Managed to make a defender miss and pick up big yardage. 22-yard pickup on the pass. They will hand it to Secre with Hockman blocking in front of him. Looks like he was close to losing the football there, but he hung on to it as he hits the turf. 
Back at the 24-yard line. So after all that, he picked up one. Second down and nine for the Spartans. Looks like Matt White's day is over. He is skidding ice on the knee. Back on the bench. Well, Secre back in the ball game. We'll see what happens with Firamonte when Case has to go back on the defensive side. Looks like they've lined up Ricky Hanslick as a wide receiver on the right side. Three on the left. Second down and nine for Case from the 24-yard line. Lapsevic on a jet sweep. They don't give it to him. Now to Rice. This play worked well in the first half. Rice thrown out of bounds near the 20-yard line. Well short of the first down. A helmet came off a Wittenberg player. Clock stops while that player gets to the sideline. It is third down for the Spartans at the 20. And make it the 19. They spot the football at the 19-yard line of the Tigers. Big third down play here. Third and three for Case. They trail it 14 to seven here in the third quarter at Case Field. Colin McLeod is in at wide receiver for Case. He's split wide to the right. Lapsevic is in the slot position on the right. Herb on the left, back to throw Olsen on third down. Middle of the field to Secre makes the catch. It's a first down to the 10-yard line. Boy, Secre just takes that play fake, hides behind his lineman, sneaks out into the middle of the defense, turns around, and he becomes that check down. Olsen takes a look downfield, see if there's anything there, nothing and then just fires it right at the number two on Secre's jersey. They put it on the money. Football marked at the 11. First and 10 case. Olsen will work under center. Secre is the lone setback. Look for the bootleg to the weak side, the right side. They will pitch it to Secre. They hand it off to Herb. He wants to throw it. Now he'll run it. Gets down to the 10, to the 5. He's close to the pylon, but he did not get in. Herb was taking a look at Lapsevic in the end zone, and when it wasn't available, he decided to run with it. And he gets down inside the 5. There's an injured Wittenberg player down on the ground. Boy, Herb was like a truck coming around the right side, Dave. Once he decided that he was going to tuck it and run, he certainly did and just tried to get ahead of steam and head to the corner. And that's what I'd like to see Case do, too, once they get inside the 10-yard line inside the five is run to the wide side of the field and let the speed and the power of that offense find that pylon. If that's Ricky Hanslick, if that's Manny Secre, if that's a end around on a jet sweep, whatever the situation Use the wide side, a little bit of the power that these guys have and the, certainly the speed that they have to reach out and try to get to that pylon. Injured player here on the field will step aside for a timeout. 14-7, Wittenberg leading Case. Case will be inside the five-yard line. We'll be back with more coverage of this homecoming game at Case Field in just a moment on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. I have this cool cash. What can I do with it? You can turn it into a hot meal at Rascal House. It's the best value in town. What do they have there? Buckets of wings, pasta, sandwiches, salads, and of course, great pizza. Are they open late? You bet. Open every night till 2.30 a.m. And you can even build your own pizza and order it online at rascalhousepizza.com. Cool. See you at the Spartans game? Yep. And see you after at Rascal House. Mark Swoop, the strong safety, is the injured player for Wittenberg. Unable to put any pressure on that left leg, left knee, carried off the field by two of his teammates. Case close to a first down. They can get a first down without actually getting a touchdown here. They can get a first down at the one, and it looks like the football is marked at the two. Now, we saw this last week, Manny Secre. Tried to get airborne from about the four-yard line and had it knocked away by the Ohio Wesleyan defense. I'd like to see them stretch this out and go wide to the left. High in the backfield now with Hockman at fullback and Secre at tailback, and we'll get a timeout. This one will be taken by Wittenberg. They wanted to make sure their defense was set up properly. 
And we'll uh, keep it here during the timeout. It looks like Michael Harris is getting some work done on the case bench as well. They have already lost Matt White. Some injuries. Is that Harris or the, is that Bryant getting well, that? I cannot see quite. Uh, yeah, it's not Harris. We see Harris now over on the sideline, so it might be Brandon Bryant. I think it's Brandon Bryant. He's had some issues with the offensive tackles from Wittenberg. Had a tough afternoon so far. Bryant usually very energetic on that defensive front, and whatever they're doing, it's neutralized Bryant's effectiveness this afternoon. Well, Case uses the timeout, that, or pardon me, Wittenberg used the timeout. That's their first here in the second half. They'll have two remaining. No functioning scoreboard today here at Case Field, so that's why we are not giving uh, exact times uh, left in the quarter. But Case is able to punch it in here. We'll get an update on the exact time of the score. Hockman at fullback, Secre at tailback. Herb is the wide receiver to the left. Double tight end set, one on each side of the formation. Olsen looks over to the sideline. It's Volbers on the left, Duraney on the right. He'll take the snap. They will give it to Secre. Counters back toward the middle. I think he had a first down, though, Dave. He didn't get in the yep. end zone, but I think he got a first down. Dives ahead for that one yard. He gets down to the one, and it should be first and goal case. They'll take a look at this one. They'll eyeball it. No signal yet whether they want to measure it. Head linesman is walking over to the chain gang. And it looks like they may bring out the chains. Well, this one, we're 75 yards, 80 yards from the field and or from the play and probably another 70 or 80 feet in the air. So I can't make the call from here, Dave. Well, you're just not doing your job. <laughs> well, they stretch out that chain. Let's see. He's a, a little bit short. <laughs> He's a, almost a full yard short from more than a minute. Odd that they would measure that one. So third down. They're just outside the one yard line. 14 to seven. Eric Olson comes over, has a quick word with Greg Debelak, the head coach of the Spartans. They spot the football now back on the right hash mark. Wittenberg has five defensive linemen in the ball game. Same formation now, Hockman at fullback, and Secre is the tailback for Case. Five linemen, four linebackers, four Wittenberg. Nine in the box. Herb is on the outside at a wide receiver position, one-on-one -on -one coverage. So here is Olsen. He's ready. Now he'll stand. They look back over at the bench. Play is signaled in. He's ready. He takes the snap. Rolls to his left, looking to the end zone. Now he tries to run for it. He is wiped out inside the five. That will go for a loss of about one. And Case will be looking at a fourth down and two back at the three-yard line. I like the play call, but it has to be a sprint rollout to the side that Olsen is comfortable on. Well, Case looks like they'll go for the field goal here as Juan Coon Park comes out for a chip shot field goal. This will be a 20-yard attempt. The hold will take place at the 10. There's the kick. It is up, and it is good. Juan Coon Park, one for two on the day. Case pulls to within four as they put three on the board. It's now 14-10, to 10, Tigers. Wittenberg ball when we come back. Homecoming Saturday, third quarter action on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Cleveland Marriott downtown at Key Center offers the versatility and reliability to meet your unique travel and meeting needs. From smart spaces to practical amenities to world-class service, our flagship hotel will deliver the quality experience you expect, backed by the Marriott name you trust. At Cleveland Marriott, we have one goal, to serve you better. 
book your special Case Western Reserve rate by visiting us at clevelandmarriottdowntown.com and entering promotional code C0N. Juan Coon Park with a 20-yard field goal, and Case pulls to within 14 to 10. 3:35 left to go here in the third quarter at Case Field. Now a 64-yard drive at that um, ate up seven minutes and 15 seconds. 14 plays to get there. Case has to settle for the field goal. Cunningham will bring back the kickoff from the 15. Out across the 30-yard line is tripped up and knocked down by Ryan Ferguson as he spins out over the 35. And looks like they will start this drive. We'll see exactly where they put the ball down. 42 passes in the ball game, Dave, and we have yet to have a holding call. In fact, only three penalties called all day. Wittenberg has one offensively for moving. Case has a 15-yarder for a personal foul, and then they had the half-to-distance block in the back on the special teams. Other than that, a clean game by both teams. Tigers start at the 34-yard line. Here's Stocker running with it. Gets across the 35 to the 40, out close to the 43-yard line. And he is tackled there by the Spartans. Wade Self got in there to finish off that play. Football marked at the 40. Two. That will be a nine-yard pickup. Second down and one. Stocker straight ahead. Didn't get it. Watson trying to strip the ball away. Could not do it. Michael Harris well, was there as well. He didn't get it on the far side of the field. The near side official almost gave him the first down. It'll remain second down. Pardon me, third down and one. Boy, the line's been on the near side here. Generous spot towards Wittenberg. We're inside three minutes to go in the third quarter. 14 to 10, Tigers leading the Spartans. Starting to become a little more overcast now. Here is the handoff to Stocker. He slips in the backfield and slides down back at the 40-yard line. Oh, a case catches a break there. As Stocker just could not quite get his footing underneath. And it'll be fourth down. They lose almost three on the play. Well, and think about what Wittenberg's done offensively. This is two consecutive three and outs, if you will. They had four plays on their first possession and missed on third and fourth down. Missed on the third down in short conversion here. They have to punt seven plays in the second half. They do not have a first down. And Case has been moving up and down the field. Nassim ready to come after the kick. Here is the kick, and it is a poor kick, and it takes a case bounce, and it will roll out of bounds at the Spartans' 40-yard line. So officially it goes as a 17-yard kick, Dave? 18-yard kick? Yeah, with no return, rolled out at the 40. Case will come out offensively after they just put a seven-minute drive together. And you put that Wittenberg defense right That's back exactly in the fire. Right. Not a lot of time to rest for the defensive unit of the Tigers. They are 3-0 on the season. Case down by 4, 14-10. They have the football. Considered tops in the NCAC. Matt White back up on his feet. They have taken the ice pack off his left knee. Eric Olson. Calls out the signals for the Spartans. He goes back, hands the ball to Manny Secre, picking his way forward across the 45, down close to the 46, maybe to the 47-yard line. Another good run for Manny Secre. His 14th carry of the afternoon. I think Case could really put a hurting on Wittenberg here, especially if this drive is mostly on the ground, mostly just that stretch play off tackle, make Wittenberg chase enough but still get beat up by that offensive line. Three receivers set. It is Rice on the left. Lapsevic in a slot position on the right. Brian Erb, the far right receiver. Secre in the backfield. They hand it to Manny Secre. Left side across midfield. Down close to the 47. And he is hit and knocked out of bounds. Last man to touch him with was Carlos Marshall, the cornerback. It's a first down for Case as they break into Tigers territory. Boy, just keep getting six and seven a play. 
wide open room for Secray. Offensive line, the five up front doing a nice job, and that includes Shea Baker, who's seeing action for Matt White. In fact, they're working with White to see if he can come back in the ball game. They've got him going through some drills and seeing if his knee is strong enough to handle the pounding that's going to take place in the interior line. Looks to be moving around pretty well down there. We'll see if he gets back in the game, starting left guard for the Spartans. Olsen in the shotgun, takes the snap, looks to throw it. Dumps it off to C. Cray. Wide open spaces ahead. 40. Down close to the 35 on the cutback. And he's, he was trying to look for an opening. He was whacked from behind. And he is slow getting up. Yeah, Shea Baker had a good block, too. C. Cray's going to come to the sideline with some aches and pains. John Daniels came from behind, completely blindsided C. Cray. End of the quarter. So that's the end of the third quarter as Manny Secre is up and walking back to the bench. But, boy, he took a hit from Daniels, and he did not see it coming. We'll see if he continues here. He's doubled over. Third quarter is history. The all-important fourth quarter is coming up next. 14-10, Wittenberg leading it. We'll be back on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Cleveland Marriott downtown at Key Center offers the versatility and reliability to meet your unique travel and meeting needs. From smart spaces to practical amenities to world-class service, our flagship hotel will deliver the quality experience you expect, backed by the Marriott name you trust. At Cleveland Marriott, we have one goal, to serve you better. Book your special Case Western Reserve rate by visiting us at clevelandmarriottdowntown.com and entering promotional code C0N. Case down by four, but driving. 14 to 10, Wittenberg. It is first and 10 case. The football is marked at the Wittenberg 34 yard line. Ricky Hanslick is in the ball game now. Manny Secre getting a breather after he took a vicious hit at the end of his last play. Rolling right, Olsen looking downfield. He's in trouble. Hit as he let go of the football. Daniels again wreaking havoc back there for the Wittenberg Tigers. Second down and 10, and Olsen fortunate that he was able to get rid of the football. Well, he was under pressure because Ricky Hanslick missed a chip block on Daniels, and Daniels was able to come untouched into the backfield. Hanslick has to get a piece of Daniels there to give Olsen the chance to look downfield. And then Hanslick not only didn't make the block, but didn't, didn't go downfield and create that outlet pass for Olsen. Greg Debelak was letting Ricky Hanslick hear about it, Ed, on the sideline. Secret checks back in whether he feels like it or not. Olsen directing traffic on the offensive line. They look a little confused right now. Five seconds left on the play clock, and they do get the play off. Olsen back to throw it. Fires it low, looking for Secret out of the backfield. Incomplete, third down and ten. And I thought for a moment, Ed, that Case might take a time out there, and they probably should have. Yeah, just with the uh, indecision of the offensive line, unsure what to do, and then the, uh, the blitz formation that Wittenberg was showing, Olsen ended up being under pressure, threw off his back foot, nothing on the ball, kind of tossed it out at the feet of Secre, not able to come up with it. And now what was a solid drive that you were beating this Wittenberg team down is kind of stalled out right around the 34-yard line. Third and 10 from the 34-yard line. Shotgun snap to Eric Olson. He'll gun it for Rice on the sideline. Leaps up. The pass intercepted. Picked off by Wittenberg. Jamal Everett comes down with the pass. He is inside the 10 on the 5-yard line. And that's where Wittenberg will take over. So it is a pick but it leaves Wittenberg 95 yards away. Serves almost like a deep punt. A lot of pushing and shoving downfield between the wide receiver and the defensive back on the play. Brian Rice was the intended receiver. And for a moment, I think Rice had it in his hands and as the, they came down, it was yanked away. Fourth quarter action. Early in the fourth quarter, Case trailing at 14 to 10. Wittenberg pinned back on their own five-yard line. Reed 
Florence takes the snap of the shotgun, hands it to Stocker, and boy, they have bottled him up in the second half. Nowhere to run for Stocker, although looks like he'll end up getting two on his forward progress. Officially, Wittenberg ran seven plays in the third quarter for a total of 20 offensive yards. Case now has 280 yards in total offense, and they have run 18 more plays than the Tigers. Second down and eight for Wittenberg. The football is marked at their seven. 14 to 10, Wittenberg leading Case. There is Florence keeping the football. Gets to the 10 yard line, tries to stiff arm Ryan Ferguson. And, and ends up getting about four on the play. That'll leave it at third and three. I mean, I'm all for a stiff arm, but that stiff arm has to be to the shoulder. Was was on the top of the mask. It's on the face mask and pushing up. That's an illegal use of the hands. Stiff arms are fine and they're very effective, but they have to be on the shoulder pad, chest, or the top of the helmet. Yeah, it was blatant. It was blatant to the face mask. No flag. Florence on third down. We'll call it a long two. He's back to throw. Middle of the field. Pass looked like it was tipped, but then grabbed by Cunningham, and it's good for the first down at the 19-yard line. Nossum got a piece of the ball coming out, but not able to really take it off its line. And again, Wittenberg doing a nice job of clearing out zones with receivers and then waiting on either a back or a tight end to circle around and find itself underneath. And that, that's exactly what happened there as Wittenberg ran two receivers deep, cleared out the zone, and the tight end just slides across the middle for the open reception. So Florence is ready in the shotgun. Cunningham will get the handoff on a sweep to the right side, and they will knock him down. Wade Self got in there, wiped out the play all the way back at the 15-yard line. And they're going to say he had forward progress to the 17. There is no way that that can be an accurate spot, and although there's not a whole lot of arguing going on from the case side, just watching that play develop in real time, Ed, it did not look like... Well, Cunningham didn't get anywhere near the, the 15, let alone the 17. Second down and 12 after the two-yard loss, and now movement on the Wittenberg line. This will mark him back five more. A.J. Owen's going to get called, the left guard. Second down, and now 17 for Wittenberg. They're going the wrong way. The football all the way back to the 12. Glad to see Brandon Bryant back on the field for Case. Case now in a dime package with six defensive backs in the ballgame. Brandon Bryant was on the bench for a while getting some treatment. Bryant, the junior, defensive end out of Rockville, Maryland. They're going to change footballs here. Not sure what this is all about. I have no idea now if the clock is moving or not during this exchange. Now they wind it. Time left in the fourth quarter, Ed. 11 and a half minutes. 14 to 10, Wittenberg. 12-yard line is the line of scrimmage. Wittenberg operating in their own territory. Florence. In the pocket, goes downfield deep. Cunningham is there. Ball knocked away by Kerry Dieter. Nice defensive play by the cornerback, Kerry Dieter. Ball was delivered late. Cunningham made a late break, and Dieter was able to read it all the way. Third Cunningham. down, 17. That was a slow out by Cunningham. Dieter recovered nicely, was able to step in front, and knock the ball away. Reed Florence Ed still having a lot of time in the pocket to look downfield. Four well, receivers set. Wittenberg using six blockers. Case only hit rushing three, but showing blitz here. Third down, 17 from the 12-yard line of the Tigers. Wittenberg yes. leading it 14 to 10, and Case will take a timeout. Well, Case took the timeout because Wittenberg was in that same formation that they scored on the touchdown. They had a stacked receiver outside near the numbers and Case was confused on how to cover the inside slot receiver. 
So a timeout on the field. We'll take one as well. 14 to 10, Wittenberg back with more fourth quarter action in a moment on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its ninth consecutive four diamond award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or a highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience that is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. One of six people watching the video feed. Well, we continue in the fourth quarter and a big play here for Wittenberg. This is a key play for Case. Third down and 17. The Tigers leading the Spartans 14-10. Florence all alone in the backfield. He has four receivers. Boy, Zach Wilson is that slot receiver. And he is matched up with, I believe that's Jordan Banky. Five on the play clock. They get it off. Shotgun snap to Florence. A lot of time. Guns at middle of the field, and it's knocked down by Dan Calabrese. Well, and that was who he was looking for, was Wilson on Banky, and Wilson had Banky turned around, and Calabrese came from the far side of the field to knock it away. So they were taking that shot to Zach Wilson. Calabrese able to get there defensively, and it is fourth and 17 from the 12-yard line. And again, Ed, the defense holds, and this should get Case good field position. Yeah, officially now, Wittenberg has just 13 yards in the second half. 13 net yards. Here is the kick. They almost got it. Calabrese will catch it at the 45-yard line. Turns it back upfield. 40, 35, down to the 30. Caught That's from behind and wow. rolls out of bounds out near the 26-yard line. Did that look like it was a horse collar, Dan? Dave, it looked like he got him up around the shoulder pads. He might have grabbed him way up from behind and ended up rolling him out of bounds. No flag on the play. Well, they talk about officials in basketball swallowing their whistles. I think these flags are stuffed way, way down in the pockets. Yeah, we just officials. haven't seen any today. Yeah, three total, or check that, four total flags in the ball game. Two false starts by Wittenberg in case has been whistled for a personal foul and a push in the back on a kick return. First and 10 from the Wittenberg 26-yard line for the Spartans down 14 to 10, fourth quarter. Manny Secre is the lone setback. Rice on the right, along with lap seven. They'll go back to throw. They go to the outside. Pass is caught over there. I believe that's Herb Fumble. lost the football, and let's see who has it. Looks like Wittenberg recovers, and the Tigers have it. One play and a turnover, and Case will have to come back out defensively. The freshman's going to have to learn there when his forward progress is stopped. There's no need to keep fighting for an extra yard. It's first down. This wasn't a fourth down play where you needed to get a first down. And, and he's going to have to learn that when he makes contact like that, he's fight, and then as soon as there's a second hit, he's got to go down and cover the football up. Instead, he, they held him up and picked at it and picked at it and eventually knocked it loose. The whistles were late coming, and the uh, turnover comes because Herb just refused to go down. I don't know if you want an over-aggressive receiver at times, but in that case, you certainly don't. Stocker running to the outside, turns it across the 20, gets to the 25-yard line, and is wrestled to the ground by Brandon Flick of the Spartans. And so the defense asked again now to stop this Wittenberg offense, and they're going with the no huddle this time. Florence takes Boy, a quick a snap. Start. A lot of people moving there. They hand it to Stocker. He dives ahead for a yard. He gets out to the 27-yard line. It'll be the center was a beat late. The other four linemen were moving forward. He kind of double heads or double clutched or hesitated on the snap and no call. Third down and one now from the 27-yard line. Wilson in motion. This will be a swing pass. Look for Will Stocker to catch this in the flat. 
Play clock at 10. Florence still shifting guys around, now at five. He calls out the signals and they get the playoff. They'll go to Stocker and it's incomplete. Fourth down and one. Kevin Nossum back there defensively. Got a hand up there. He at least got in the vision of Stocker if he didn't touch the ball. Punting unit comes on. Boy, Greg Debelak is hot. He's talking to the field judge about something, talking about the delay of game, I believe. They were late starting the clock, I think, and then he's saying that there was no way that that didn't take five seconds after the five-second signal. Punt coming from Nick Gibson of Wittenberg. He will get it away. Line drive, kick. Calabrese goes back. He will grab it, and he has nowhere to run by the time he is there to get the ball. And Dan decided to field that ball because it was taking a Wittenberg bounce, and I think that baby would have gone another 20 yards back there. It had enough uh, spin on it to keep moving. Well, the question is, did it hit a Wittenberg player past the line of scrimmage? It hit someone, and it looked like it did deflect uh, from someone up there. It was a line drive kick about five feet off the ground. You see, here's the question, and that's exactly what Greg Deblack is talking about. If that ball touched a Wittenberg player past the line of scrimmage, that's the down placement of the punt. If it's behind the line, it's, it's okay, but that ball is up past the line of scrimmage when it makes contact with a Wittenberg player, should be downed at that spot. Officials are going to huddle up here and talk about it. Now, it appeared, Ed, that if it hit anybody, it was beyond the line of scrimmage. They're going to say no. Case will have the football at their own 37-yard line. Fourth quarter action, Wittenberg up 14-10. to 10. The Case has had plenty of opportunities here in this second half. They just haven't been able to cash in. Wittenberg only has one first down. Since halftime. Eric Olson calls out the signals. He'll be in the shotgun with Secre in the backfield. Herb Lapsevic and Rice are the receivers. Volbers is in as a tight end. Witt had shown blitz and now backs out. Olson takes the snap. Back to throw it. Middle of the field. Volbers, the tight end, makes the catch out across the 40. And he'll be down at the 41-yard line, pushed back, but forward progress out to the 41. Not a big gainer. Pickup of only two on the play. Second down and eight coming up for Case. They have the football, but down by four. And they say he got to the 42. Four-yard gain. Second down, a long six. Manny Secret gets the handoff from Olsen. Finds a hole, dives ahead of the 45. Close to the 47, they needed to get to the 48-yard line. Case looking at a short third down. No functioning scoreboard today at Case Field, so that's why we are not giving you time in the fourth quarter or any point in the game today. It's being kept on the field. And so we are somewhat in the dark as the time left in the football game. Fourth quarter action, case down by four. Third down, two to go. They will hand the ball to Secre. Bounces off a tackler, gets to midfield. He has the first down. Now that time, Kyle Sanning leading with his helmet on top of the pile. And Manny came up with his arms outstretched as if to say, where's the flag? He felt it. Now all afternoon, that's probably four or five times that Wittenberg has ended a play with a front seven defender leading with a helmet to a case player. Eric Olson calls out the signals under center three receivers set they'll hand the football to Ricky Hanslick good blocking out in front he works his way down to the 45 yard line of the Tigers five yard pickup for the sophomore Ricky Hanslick has done a good job today spelling Manny Secret 
both of these running backs in the last quarter or so, Dave, 15 minutes of play, are looking for an inside cutback lane instead of outside. There it looked like Hanslick may have had some room to the outside. The previous play, definitely Secret had some area to the outside to run as well and cut it back up underneath. Olsen under center, takes the snap. Manny Secret gets the handoff. Looked like Manny was just about a couple inches above the ground. He still dives ahead, gets across the 40. It should be good for the first down. And they're going to mark him at the 41. Well, there you hear the reaction from the crowd as another unfavorable spot leaves Case in a third and one. We'll see if Olsen tries to sneak this one ahead. It's third and less than a yard. Olsen behind his center. That is Andy Burkbile. There is the sneak for Olsen, and we'll see. Fulbers was trying to push it from behind. They say it's a first down. Olsen gets him the first down on the sneak. Nice job by Burkbile. And the football near the 39-yard line. Well, at this pace, Case is going to have 36 or 37 minutes of offense. And again, just unable to poke it in. They've struggled inside the opponent red zone and certainly inside the opponent 30 all season long. Well, they dominated the time of possession last week against Ohio Wesleyan. And came out on the short end. Olsen rolls right on a bootleg. He looks downfield. He'll run it and dives across the 35. And again, they will spot him back. See, now they're going to mark that where he started his dive, but it's a forward dive, not a give up slide. He should be down where his elbows touched and with the football, which is up near the 32. And they marked him down where his knees touched at the 33. It is second down and four. Three receivers stacked to the left side. Volbers at tight end on the right. Secre in the backfield for Case, 14 to 10 Wittenberg. Second down play, Olsen takes the snap. Secre straight up the middle, looks to have first down yardage. Gets inside the 30 yard line before he is wrapped up and brought down. Spencer Lino in on the tackle. At some point, the Wittenberg defense is just gonna start putting their hands on their hips and bending over and you can see three and four of their defensive linemen are in that same position. They're just, they're gassed. The offense has picked up one first down for the Tigers in cases starting to finally beat the drum. That is the Wittenberg defense. 540 to go, we are told, in the fourth quarter. Here is the handoff to Hanslick. Gets across the 25 over on the right side near the numbers. And he is hit and knocked down near the 22-yard line. That's Mark Swoop, who was carried off the field earlier back in the ball game with the stick. Second down and four for Case after the six-yard run by Ricky Hanslick on first down. Fourth quarter action, Case marching and trying to take the lead. They are down by four. A field goal does no good. Secre gets the handoff. He will go nowhere this time. He was grabbed down around his legs and brought down by John Daniels. But again, that sweep, that stretch play is to the short side of the field. Most effective has been in that two tight end set with the stretch play to the wide side of the field. It allows Secre the most chance to get going and allows him the opportunity to cut it out or up. Football is on the right hash mark. Case moving left to right. Press coverage by the Wittenberg secondary. Olsen is in the shotgun. Herb on the far side left. Rice on the far side right. Lapsevic in a slot position. They will gun it for Lapsevic, makes the catch at the 20-yard line. The Spartans will be short of the first down. It'll be fourth down. We'll see where they give 
him the uh, ball. They'll say it was caught at the 19-yard line. So it's fourth and less than a yard. They need to get a first down would guarantee them if they get the ball to the 18. Case trying to run the play quickly here. Full house backfield. Hockman at fullback. Secre at tailback. Look to see this go off tackle to the wide side, left side of the field. Olsen takes the snap. They'll run to the short side. It's Secre, and he did Didn't not get, get it. it. Ball will go back to the Tigers, and they will hold their 14-10 lead. Secre is shaken up on the play, rolling over on his back. Greg Debelak yelling out something to the officials. Secre is injured. And a timeout will be taken here as they will take a look at the injured Spartans tailback. We'll take a timeout as well. Wittenberg football, when we come back, they lead the Spartans by a score of 14 to 10, late fourth quarter. We'll be back with more after this timeout on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. This year, Qdoba will cater like 10,000 parties. Where? When? I'm there. Well, these parties are hypothetical. I was just talking about Qdoba catering. Hot taco bars with fire-grilled chicken and marinated steak, flour tortillas, and taco shells. You'll also get their hand-smashed guacamole, cheese, sour cream, lettuce, and salsa. They'll deliver to your home or office, and they'll even set it up. Can I bring a guest? Oh, boy. Visit Qdoba.com today for more information about Qdoba catering. Qdoba Mexican Grill. More to explore. Manny Secre is now being helped up, but not uh, totally under his own power. See, he has an injured right leg. And he's getting some assistance as he is brought off the field. Uh, Case gives it up on downs, but this does not look good. I don't understand the fourth down play call. Wittenberg was looking for the run, and... They had stacked that, again, that was the strong side of the formation was the short side of the field, but all the open room on a toss sweep or a stretch play to the, to the wide side leaves you the most opportunity to get just three feet. And so instead of gaining three, you lost three, and you give the ball back to Wittenberg offensively with about two and a half to three minutes to play in the ballgame. Now Reed Florence takes the snap. He'll hand it to Stocker, running east-west along the 20-yard line. He's finally brought down. We'll give him a yard, maybe almost two yards on the play. Up to the 22-yard line. Case uses a timeout. So Case will take a timeout and stop the clock right now. Does not look, if Case is able to get the ball back, it does not look like Manny Secre will be in a position to contribute anytime soon. He is flat on the trainer's table, and they are looking at his right knee. 2.52 to go in the fourth quarter. Case uses a timeout here. They have been outstanding defensively here in the second half. They have absolutely neutralized Wittenberg's offense. Wittenberg has one first down, under 50 yards in total offense. But Case has had a turnover at the 20 yard line. They've had a turnover on downs, again, inside the 20 yard line. They had an interception at the five yard line. So again, it just starts to pick up more and more and more. The chances, just like last week against Ohio Wesleyan, they just cannot capitalize when they get inside the opponent 20 or 25-yard line. Things Fort seem to stall out on them. Yep, 14 to 10. Wittenberg leading it by four. They have the football. Reed Florence has been outstanding today at quarterback for Wittenberg. He will run it himself, gets across the 25 out near the 30. That's a killer to the 31, first down. and that's a first down run. That's a killer. The Wittenberg quarterback, Reed Florence, runs for the first down. First and 10 from the Wittenberg 31 yard line. Manny Secre is up off the trainer's table and walking gingerly over in front of the training staff. Wittenberg taking their time. 
Getting to the line. We are somewhere around two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Case down by four. Reed Florence oversees the defense. Now hands it to Stocker. He is hit and knocked backwards. He'll get the 32-yard line. It's almost as if, Ed, they feel as though at least a yard has to be awarded on a play. Except when Case is going towards the north end of the stadium. Then it was no gain. Timeout taken again by Case. They use their second timeout. That stops the clock. We'll see if we get an update on the exact time left here in the fourth quarter. Second down and nine for Wittenberg. And you're exactly right, Ed. The Spartans have had ample opportunities but have not been able to cash in anything. And, well, the news is not good. Manny Secre is being put in a cast. Looks like an air cast or brace all the way down around his lower leg and his ankle. He was injured on that fourth down run that came up a little bit short and gave Wittenberg the ball on downs. Case already has four players on crutches on the sideline. They're putting the cast over his shoe. So they did not take off his cleat on his right leg, but Secre is being fitted for a brace or air cast, and boy, that is that is just a horrible sight for the Spartans. Case has one timeout remaining, I believe. They have used two. They have one remaining. Florence on second down and nine. Calls out the signals. The Tigers quarterback still trying to position some players. Steven Zumdick in motion for Wittenberg. And now Florence rolls right after taking the snap, fires it out in the flat, incomplete. Looking out there for Garth Gilbert, incomplete, third down and nine. That saves Case. They don't have to use the timeout. Can save it here after a third down play and hopefully get the ball back. Wittenberg making a couple of substitutions. And they're all looking over to the bench. Now they have the play. Case down by four, 14 to 10. Look for a quarterback sweep to the weak side. Florence with Stocker in the backfield to his left. They will hand it to Stocker. He runs to the far side, gets to the 35, is grabbed and Drug down, they'll give him the 36-yard line. Adam Watson was there, Kevin Nossum, Jordan Banky, and they force a fourth down and about five from the Wittenberg 36-yard line. And the case defense has just been absolutely terrific here in the second half. Case doesn't have any timeouts left, apparently. They didn't use it. And we do not have the benefit of the scoreboard, and I thought they only used two, but perhaps they used one earlier in the second half, Ed. I, I can't recall. Or they may be saving their third. We are kind of in the dark with no functioning scoreboard today at Case Field. And Wittenberg has used their timeout. So Wittenberg takes the timeout. The Spartans will be without Manny Secre. Secret's up walking around. He's got that uh, brace on his leg. And made his way back toward the sideline. I think if they keep playing, Manny Secret could become the poster boy for the new medical mart here in town. As he has a brace on his left elbow, a brace on his right knee. He has a cover-up on his right elbow. And two ankle supports that he's wearing <laughs> in both shoes. Well, Secret is done for the day. He's sitting back on the bench, looks very dejected, and who knows the severity of that injury. Spartans lost Kenny Reardon in week two against Hiram. And now Secret potentially is on the shelf as well. Case is on the short end here, Dave, possibly losing 
their third consecutive game by a total of eight points. And an update on the time left in this game, and it is 54 seconds. So we are under a minute in the fourth quarter. Calabrese waiting on the kick. Here it comes from Nick Gibson. Calabrese makes the catch, drops it, and it goes out of bounds as it rolls behind him, and it's out of bounds near the 25-yard line. It was a rugby-style kick. And Calabrese could not field it cleanly, and luckily for the Spartans, it rolled out of bounds. It was not up for grabs for the punt coverage team. So a long way to go for Case and not a lot of time to do it. Under a minute to go in the football game. Well, Case had to settle for a field goal in the third quarter when they were down inside the 10-yard line of Wittenberg. Three times tonight, they are this afternoon, they've had the ball in the fourth quarter inside the Wittenberg 25 and have been stopped either by downs or turnovers. Here's the snap back to Olsen. First and 10 from the 25-yard line. Olsen tries to run for it. He'll be hit from behind, knocked down. At about the 33-yard line, Case hurries up and gets to the line of scrimmage. Bergbile ready to snap it. Olsen calls for it, takes the snap, wants to throw it. And this pass is batted down, incomplete. Rice tried to come back to the ball. Not a smart move by Brian Rice. He needs to let that one fall. If he catches it, the game is probably over. Case wouldn't be able to set up and get another snap off. As it is now, they're probably down to about 27 or 28 seconds. No scoreboard. Hard to give you an exact time. At the start of the drive, there were 54 seconds left. Incomplete pass, of course, stops the clock. Hanslick in the game at tailback. He's the only one they have left. Back to throw Olsen. Wants to gun it downfield for Herb, and it's overthrown. Out of bounds and incomplete. Herb was twisted around on that. Looked like he was fading towards the inside, towards the numbers, and Olsen put it on the outside near the hash marks. Heath Eby, the free safety, was there defensively on Herb. And here's the ball game, fourth down. Case needs a first down to continue. Fourth down and three. Football is at the 33-yard line. There are seconds, precious seconds left in this game. Fourth quarter at Case Field, 14 to 10 Wittenberg. Eric Olson calls the signals, takes the snap on fourth down, finds Herb, passes dropped. That's your ball game. Wittenberg will take over on downs. Brian and Herb could not hang on to the pass. It was a little bit low. And the number 21 team in the country escapes, Dave. Truly escapes with a 14 to 10 win. They had the lead 14 to seven at halftime. They have not been able to generate anything offensively in the second half, but their defensive unit has neutralized Case as well. But only inside the, the red zone, they were a bend but don't break. And yep. if this is truly the 21st best team in the country, then Case is, is still right there despite now losing three in a row. There's victory formation, and Reed Florence takes the snap and takes a knee, and that'll do it. 